Who uses Appium? Does anyone do any mobile testing? API testing? Any testing in general? <laughs> I just want to make sure. I mean, I don't want you to test in production. I mean, most people do. Um, but specifically, this is, um, so if you're unfamiliar with Calabash, Calabash is a, um, a friendly framework that you can use for testing iOS and Android apps using Ruby. It exclusively uses Ruby, unlike Appium, which uses, um, which is um, um, programming language agnostic. So it uses Ruby, Java, doesn't use Python, uses, um, yeah. A bunch of different frameworks, C++, or C++ as well. But um, if you're in the Ruby world, Q, uh, Calabash is kind of the, the go-to source for testing iOS and Android apps. But um, so this slide or this presentation is all about testing multiple devices using one feature file um, or one set of feature files. And feature files are the instructions that you want to or the tests that you want to run against a particular platform. Uh, when you're doing application development, it pretty much breaks, into, breaks down to four separate areas. You're always recording what you're, uh, what you're developing and testing. Two, you store, the, uh, store your source code, either your app code or your test code. You build the application and then you actually test it and then you record your test results in one central location. Um, for us, we use Jira for recording all of our tests and test results in one specific area. So it's kind of a one-stop shop having pushing everything into Jira. Uh, we are able to export out our test into Stash, which is our Git repo. Uh, Jenkins kind of monitors everything and it does a pull request if there sees any changes to our Git repo, builds our application, either iOS, Android, our websites, or any sort of API testing we need to do. Tests it as well, uh, so it kind of branches off and uses um, either Calabash on the iOS and Android side and then um, Selenium Cucumber on the web side and then just straight Ruby on the API testing side. And then Calabash takes all that information, throws it up in a JSON file, puts it back in Jira, and displays all this nice graphical information letting you know how well or <coughs> not well your test went. So going into Cucumber, uh, it kind of looks like this. Uh, this is the Gherkin. So Gherkin is the, um, is the actual language that Cucumber uh, understands and it marries the Cucumber file or the um, the Gherkin file or a line in a uh, Gherkin file to an actual step definition or an execution in whatever language that you're shooting for. So in this example, we have, you know, we have a feature that we're testing. We have a scenario for that particular feature. When I, log, when I press log in, I see welcome to the coolest app ever. Of course, this is just a sample because we always make cool apps. Um, so we look at the actual code behind for the step definition. It looks at, um, it matches the, when I press login to this particular step definition. So it takes the variable login, passes over to when I tap exist, uh, element exists, and it looks, it passes over to the application or the application under test, looks at it, finds that particular element, uh, performs the action and reports the results back either a zero letting you know that it performed successfully or any sort of error messages that uh, flows back uphill. So we kind of use, um, we have two different repositories, one for app code and then one for test code. So all of our code goes into separate repositories. Uh, two, Jenkins monitors the repo for changes. So if there's a change to the app code, it runs against the current test code. If there's any change to the current test code, it runs against the current app code. Any questions? Sounds simple? Cool. So kind of showing you how Cucumber works, you have a Cucumber project. Starts off at the top, then it goes down to a feature level. The feature connects to a particular scenario. Scenario goes down to a particular step in the scenario. Then it leaps from the business layer over to the technolo uh, technology layer and then it looks at the step definition that matches to the step in your business layer. Then it goes to the supporting code, either if you're using page object model or any other model within the application or within your test. Then it goes over to the automation library, which is Calabash for, um, for our instance. And then it goes to the application under test, which is the iOS or Android device or the application that's uh, under that spe uh, specific test. Then once it finishes, it kind of bubbles back up and let you know either it passed or failed. But what if you, this, this is okay. So th the complication you run into is that you have to have separate 
um, Cucumber files or feature files for iOS, Android, um, web automation, um, website automation, and API testing. But what if you could actually, at your step definitions, split the code and just either branch it off and say, um, this, uh, for this run, I want you to run all the tests for iOS, and for a separate run, you're gonna run all the tests for Android, still remaining, still having the same steps in your automation, but your code, or your supporting code and your automation libraries kind of take a fork depending on what, um, where, what direction you want to go for your testing. And that's where this kind of talk is going into. So there is a sample code under GitHub. It's rarely used, it hasn't been updated in a while, but it's still a good example on how to perform cross-platform uh, cross testing using, um, using feature files and one set of feature files and then kind of diverging from there into separate lines of step definition and page file code so that you can just have one set of it's one set of tests across multiple applications. So first we set it up, we actually, um, for this example, we have a bunch of, um, have a def that, or we set up the example, so, or set up the code so that we can actually go in and have a bunch of variables for logging in and asserting uh, different invalid login messages. You have all the different defs within the YAML file. And this is an example, so given, um, so we hit a scenario, we go to given I'm about to log in, when I enter invalid credentials, then I'm presented with an error message to correct, cor uh, to message to correct, correct credentials. So we're gonna look at specifically the when I entered invalid credentials, and when it branches over, we look at the step definition code, and here we can look and see that when I enter invalid credentials, we have an at page dot login, which refers to a uh, refers to our page file, which kind of organize, which we organize in such a way so it separates our our iOS step definition or step definition page files from our uh, Android uh, page files, and I'll get into that a little bit later. On the iOS side, this is what it looks like as far as the login information. If you if we go back to page login when it executes that, we we pass over the user credentials and we expect an invalid response. So we pass the information over, we pass over the email address, the password, we expect an invalid response back and then we just wait for a particular action to happen. The magic to this is how it looks under the requirements that are for each of the page files that's in the, um, in the directory. So for iOS, we mark it as an iBase and for Android, we mark it as an A-base. And that's not, thank you. So we'll look over and how it looks. There we go. So under feature files, so if we look at the run.rb file, which is what we use for executing, so we see that it actually executes a command for Q, uh, for, um, for Calabash Android with the arguments for the APK or IP, um, APP file, depending on if you're using Android or iOS as a target for the command line. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, that's a little bit different on this one. Uh, Ah, just not my day today. Do you maybe? Second view. Uh, no. Yeah, we're in presenter mode, so it's like, uh, let's see. You know, if I was really being professional, I'd be on top of my game today. Uh, let's see. That's not gonna work. So, what can't you see? Will be my first question. <laughs> of course, of course, you're QA. <laughs> yes, I am QA. So, <laughs> let's, analyze, let's analyze a problem first. Let's look at the source. Um, so, on the. <laughs> I got the microphone, I should be the comedian here. Sorry, I'm, 
a notorious heckler. No, I... I but I'll be up on stage uh, next. Cool. My turn. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, as I was saying before, so rudely interrupted, um, this guy. Um, so, as I was saying, with, um, with iOS and Android, you have separate targets when you run the run.rb command. With the arguments, you're, <laughs> with the arguments, you're, um, for, for this example, we're using WordPress, which is open source, to point to either a WordPress app file or a WordPress uh, apk file, with the command line arguments to run either Calabash on the Android side or um, Calabash or Cucumber on the on the Android, Calabash Android on the Android side, or just Cucumber on the iOS side. Under the features, we have a divergence. So we have our step definitions, which has or Calabash steps, which would basically uh, require, uh, if, it's, if your platform chosen was iOS, use Calabash Cucumber. If it's Android, require Android or Android slash Cucumber. We also have our login steps as well. And our step definitions. So if we go to one of our step definitions, which is um, when I enter invalid credentials, it'll go to the step definition, which is your login step. And we go down to when I log in with invalid credentials. We have a bunch of variables here that gets passed over to the .page file. Uh, so username, password, credentials, or site credentials. And if we look at the, um, for iOS, we see that we have a bunch of page files here. So each of the page files represents the actions that you would take on the application on that specific page. Normally with a page action file or um, page object model, on, in the pages folder would be your nouns where, or a list of different um, attributes or uh, elements on a particular page. And then your um, feature files or your uh, files that would contain your step definitions would, have, would be all the actions that you would take against, the step, uh, against your page files. Um, with, the, um, with this particular model, with the cross-platform model, you're actually pushing those actions over into the page folder so that you can actually direct, based on your command line arguments, which actions you want to take depending on the platform that you're using. Any questions? Cool. So... Um, if you want to check out the code, like I said, it is, um, it is open source. It is on, um, it's on GitHub. So just uh, github.com slash calabash slash x dash platform dash example. And that's all I got. Any questions? Oh, got one. Yes, it's totally in Ruby. So um, we use it extensively for um, continuous, or actually, I'm actually building a continuous integration environment. So we're actually, once a test gets dropped into uh, Jira, the test, the Jenkins will take over, see the changes, pull out the feature files, push it over to Stash, Jenkins sees another change, runs a build, or builds the application, tests the application, and sends the results back into Jira. And the same thing can apply for um, automation for iOS, web, API, and um, yeah, iOS, Android, web, and API testing. Yes? Why do you use two repos, one for your code and one for your tests? So we want to be able to monitor the changes. We, won't, we really didn't want to um, uh, cause any distraction for our developers. So we have developers and QAs kind of sit right next to each other, but we still want to make sure that any changes that happen were isolated to that particular repo. Kind of makes sense? Okay. Yes? Uh, yeah, so you have those different folders for both uh, iOS and Android, mm -hmm. and different page files. Yep. Is there a lot of stuff you can share between those different platforms, or is it usually the case? <laughs> so with, right, that's a good question. So with, um, with Calabash, uh, the current version of uh, Calabash, the code is pretty separate because they don't share a lot of, 
they don't share a lot of actions between each other because it is one's iOS and one's Android, and the execution is a little bit different. On Android, you have to uh, resign the app and turn on developer mode on the phone, versus on the iOS side, you have to actually install a separate framework that would open up an HTTP connection to communicate with the iOS device. Unlike with Appium, you have um, it piggybacks on top of instruments to perform the actions, but you lose a lot of the um, higher level functionality like GPS or um, uh, different touch features. Yes? Um, I didn't catch uh, how many times in the, the package you have to do Just one time. So you, you set up your iOS branches, you set up your Android branches, you set up the folder structure, and then... Oh, if the pla so that's where the convert, that's where when you set, when you start writing your page files, that's when you kind of, you don't have to, you, you use your at page to indicate what direction you want to go in when you're programming for on uh, the step definitions in Ruby. So at that point, once you type in dot page and you run an execution with the iOS argument, then it'll assign, it will know to go to the iOS the, the folder structure that has iOS involved in it. And the same thing for Android. Yes? What about the version of the operating system? I'm sorry? The version of the operating system. Because I know it's just iOS or Android. Are you doing anything that's a different version in that uh, Android or iOS? Um, it's a little... No, we're not. Um, ideally, the app, the versions of the app... Well, let me step back for a second. So you can do conditional statements in Calabash based on the iOS version or the, um, the version of the, uh, the platform itself, whether it's uh, iPod, iPad, I, you know, iPhone, whatever version of iPhone it is. Um, in this example, we're trying to make a, just a universal, um, universal test that will run across everything. But ideally, you could. Anything else? One more. Is it purely black box testing, or you actually have access to like black box testing? Um, in this example, we're doing black box testing um, mm -hmm. with, um, yeah, this is just totally black box, black box testing. Does it have any, does Calabash have the ability to get into that Yeah, so you can install backdoors. So with, on the iOS and Android side, you can, um, if you're developers, like say, for example, you had, um, um, data that you want to pass to the device in the middle of test to simulate a download, but you don't want to go ahead and you don't want to go through a download. It takes 25 minutes. You can open up a back door within the Calabash application uh, on the iOS side, and both on iOS and Android, and actually insert the data in whatever direction you want to. Any other questions about Calabash? Cool. Thank you very much.